Town only with the latest on road conditions and snow totals. And to see the snow showers come to an end for our Friday. Plus, SBU TV investigates hateful comments on the anonymous social media app. Would they be able to prevent Yik Yak from being used on the St. Bonaventure University campus? And one Olean man is making the most of the snow, carving life-size sculptures. SBU TV traveled to Buffalo this week to take a look at his latest creation. SBU TV starts right now. Good morning and welcome back to SBU TV, our first show of the semester. I'm Rich Williams. And I'm Johnny's Washington. And Johnny's a major snowstorm hit our uh, our area last night. Yeah, Rich, we got eight to ten inches, a little and less than expected. The snow has caused all of the Cattaraugus County schools to be closed today. As plows continue their cleanup, SBU TV's Aiden Varley is live in downtown Olean with the latest. Aiden, good morning. I'm here in downtown Olean on North Union Street, where you can see the conditions are very slick. I had trouble getting out this morning out of my car to class. And you can see, even on the secondary roads, that's very rough. On, on Tuesday, the town of Olean had, was issued a winter storm warning from Wednesday to night to Friday morning. Olean was predicted to get over nine inches of snow. The city of Olean sent out its plows on, main, on the main road last night to help with the morning commute. The town of Olean started plowing secondary streets at 8 a.m. this morning. All the primary streets will be plowed from midnight until 7 a.m. Uh, we also have uh, North Union, or Union Street and State Street that are plowed between the hours of 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. Any cars parked on West State Street in the way of the plows will be paid a fine. Cars parked on the roads in the way of the plow will receive a $50 fine. During the snowstorm of late January, over 200 tickets were given out for parking violations. As Arm Lewandowski will say in the weather hit later, that the snow will stop today and it will start to get much colder. As you can see, there's many people around town that are starting to, to shovel and there's many plows going around to try and clean up the snowing condition. That's all for my reporting. Back to you, John Easton Rich. Thank you, Aiden. Wintry conditions are the cause of an accident that closed Clare Road Thursday. Drivers told SBU TV's reporters on the scene that slick snowy roads led to the crash. Tow trucks towed both vehicles away. Safety and security, Mert and state police responded to the scene. The drivers and passengers of the vehicles are okay. St. Bonaventure started snow cleanup yesterday with the athletic fields, roads, and walkways. This morning, the plows are cleaning up the parking lots for Friday morning classes. Some students got stuck this morning trying to get to class. St. Bonaventure's priority is to clean the sidewalks and roads before the parking lots. Students will need to leave a few minutes early for their Friday morning classes. We aren't the only ones with snow this time around. Missouri, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Oklahoma, Indiana, Texas. Just some of the states dealing with the same weather we are. The massive weather event had over 100 million people face winter storm watches and warnings. I'm meteorologist Autumn Lewandowski with WKBW for SBU TV. We are going to see the snow showers come to an end for our Friday. Temperatures are going to hang out near the 20 degree mark and then we calm things down for the weekend. Going to be chilly on Saturday with sunshine. Temperatures are going to be in the teens and then for Sunday expect a bit more sun seasonable. We'll be in the lower 30s for daytime highs. The night of December 12th and early morning of the 13th, racially charged and hateful comments posted anonymously to the media platform Yik Yak were reported to university authorities. As of today, those anonymous posters still are unknown. What steps does the university plan to take now? What is the plan for the future? Jordan Fitch reports. It's been over a month since the original posts emerged on Yik Yak on the St. Bonaventure campus. Members of the Bonas community responded in a variety of ways. The comments were expected by some. They're not surprising. Their comments made um, towards HEOP students and students of color overall. I've dealt with comments like that since my freshman year here and I'm a senior, so none of that stuff surprises me. Tech services played an important role during the incident and were the main liaisons contacting Yik Yak. So we went in and looked at the looked at Yik Yak to find the posts. They had been taken down by the time we had been notified. But I sent uh, multiple emails to Yik Yak's um, parent company to ask them to geofence us. So basically, 
would they be able to prevent Yik Yak from being used on the St. Bonaventure University campus? Applied to my initial email with a negative, they wouldn't do it, and then they just don't respond to any subsequent emails. Hoffman explained that the only thing that could keep Yik campus would be Yik Yak itself being able to geofence the area. Regardless, I asked him another question. What would the university do if another incident happened again? Well, again, there's precious little we can do. I mean, we will, we will again, try to work the channels with Yik Yak if we can. Um, there's, on the tech side, there's just not a lot I can do because everybody's walking around with one of these. Um, it's, it's very, it's, I'm limited. This is Jordan Fitch reporting. New, now, next. SBU TV will continue to look into this situation. We will update you on our Instagram and Facebook if we learn anything new. New York State troopers arrest a man caught with his pants down in the Allegheny Walmart. Walmart called state police concerned about a man they saw sleeping in his car when troopers arrived. They saw Andrew Nelson passed out in his car with his pants off. Next to him, police found an envelope filled with fentanyl and other drug items. He was arrested for fentanyl possession and will be in Allegheny Town Court this month. William Larson, accused of murdering his parents and setting their family home on fire in the fall of 2019, faces more charges. After allegedly killing his parents, state police conducted a manhunt. That's what you're looking at right now. He now faces contraband charges, which he allegedly had with him in the jail cell. There is no word yet on what kind of contraband Larson had. He remains awaiting trial in Allegheny County Jail. Cryptocurrency, NFTs, Bitcoin. These aren't just buzzwords floating around social circles and media circuits. It seems like the decentralized finance world is an innovation here to stay. But what does it all mean? Just how risky can it be? And is now a good time for St. Bonaventure to think about creating courses that could educate our student body and even the community on the emerging money-making method. Something called blockchain technology emerged after the 2007-2008 recession. This is when cryptocurrency hit the economic scene. But the crypto world boomed in 2021 and is rapidly growing as we speak. 16% of Americans already invested or traded in cryptocurrency, according to the Pew Research Center. Another fact, out of the top 20 business schools in the country, Bloomberg reports 95% offer blockchain and crypto courses. SVU TV is digging into the digital currency facts and wants to know if you think it's a time for St. Bonaventure to offer courses on the topic. And St. Bonaventure University's search for a new president continues in 2022. Last December, the Board of Trustees reviewed three candidates suggested by the search committee, but decided to continue the search after reviewing all three candidates. SBU TV talked to Megan Hall, a member of the search committee, about where the process is at. Actually, the same group um, of people that were on the, pre on the first round search committee are still using the same search firm as we were um, last semester. While the, search committee is, while the search is going on, Dr. Zimmer will continue to act as the university's president. The New York legislature has approved new congressional districts. New York 23, the district that covers the southern tier, has lost Tompkins County, but has gained Tioga and parts of Erie, Broome, Wyoming, and Cortland counties. These will be New York's districts for the next, next 10 years until the next census. Governor Kathy Hochul gave her final approval of the maps Thursday night. Three weeks into the semester and St. Bonaventure has almost hit the same number of COVID cases as it had the last semester. We have an update for you on that next. And while the snow brings schools and other events to a halt, one only in man makes art out of his white powder. We bring you his story coming up. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. That's not good, Rich. Oh. Yeah, but think about it. Maybe you can make retirement happen. 
after all, you made home ownership happen. Homeschooling yourself on loans, beefing up your credit score. So I'm pre-approved. You were like, yes. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. Color coding listings, ticking boxes, and flushing every toilet in a 20-mile radius. Home sweet home. You aced house hunting. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. The black truck? Hey, Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to call a car. That's a smart idea. So, yeah, I know. That's why I did it. Hey, you're going to get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm going to get back with Christina? No. Oh. No, no. I think it's just vapor and flavors. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes. Get your head out of the cloud. Talk to your kid about vaping. Visit talkaboutvaping.org. You better keep your winter coats out. In case you missed it, Wednesday it was Groundhog Day, and everyone wanted to know what Punxsutawney Phil would predict. Unfortunately, Phil did see his shadow, which means six more weeks of winter. Phil is part of a Groundhog Day celebration that dates back to the 19th century at the Punxsutawney Groundhog Club. And in our neck of the woods, Dunkirk Dave, a local groundhog, shared his prediction with Phil, saying six more weeks of winter. This week was the deadline for St. Bonaventure University students to get their COVID-19 booster shots. SVU TV's Kurt Martone looked into the facts. Just three weeks into the first semester of 2022 and St. Bonaventure already seeing close to the same caseload it did over the last six months of 2021. It's a little unsettling to see we were almost the same number of cases this semester or last semester, but again, it's, it's a, just a totally different animal. Experts predicted this with the rise of the Omicron variant, the CDC calling this the most transmissible variant yet. In anticipation, the university required booster shots for all students. If they're asymptomatic, there's no need to quarantine, which was not the case last semester or last year. No, that's, that works in our favor as well. And you are exempted from getting a booster shot if you already have a religious or medical exemption or if you'd had COVID in the last 90 days. To receive an exemption because of a COVID infection, you have to upload quarantine orders onto the school's health portal. I asked for the numbers of how many people have gotten the booster shot so far. The administration did not provide that to me. They say they're taking their time to sort through the data. So we, we, because we have to go through every person's file to make sure we're reaching out to the correct people, that'll take, that'll take a while. So we don't have a number yet. For SPU TV, I'm Kurt Martone. As of this morning, St. Bonaventure has eight cases on campus. In Cattaraugus County, there are 269 active cases. The month of February is Black History Month, and here on campus, we have a few events coming up that are planned. On February 9th, SBU Asia will present their 1,001 nights, and on February 16th at 7 p.m., the Damietta Center will host a group discussion on the second floor of the Riley Center. Make sure to follow us on social to stay updated. This past Monday, the Quick Arts Center hosted an event honoring Martin Luther King Jr. The event saw performances from the St. Bonaventure Choir, as well as speakers Marisol Woods-Jones and Reverend Gerald Slack. My wish was to have gone through these experiences and to fight for change so that rising black and brown students would not be subject to blatant racism and bias, which I've, I've experienced every year I have attended St. Bonaventure. While this wish is hopeful, it is quite frankly naive and unobtainable. Pretending that these instances will end with my graduating year is no way to face the problem with bias at this institution. It's hard to take the event has brought light to the community, which has sparked some events to happen on campus during Black History Month. The election isn't until November, but campaigns are already heating up. Claudia Tenney said he, she will run for Congress in the newly drawn New York 23 seat. Tenney, a Republican, currently represents New York's 22nd district, but that district has been broken up by the newly released map. So far, no Democrat has challenged Tenney for the seat. Tom Reed, the current representative, is retiring after this term. Riley, the St. Bonaventure Bonnie's mascot, facing criticism from some fans on the social media platform Yik Yak this week. The Bonna Wolf considered missing in action by some after the game against St. Joe's on Saturday. We dug through the comments. 
There were a total of eight messages within two hours. People seemingly annoyed with the constant motion of the St. Joe's mascot, Hawk. The mascot can be seen constantly flapping its wings. One commentator writes, does the turkey ever stop waving its wings? Another humdinger of a comment read, Bonna Wolf Riley needs to show this MF chicken what's up. According to St. Joe's website, Hawk's wings flap approximately 3,500 times per game. A reminder, Yik Yak is a social media app allowing users to anonymous, anonymously comment. The Bonnies beat the Hawks that night, 80-69. Eric Jones, an only man and artist, but his art is different. It can melt. John East was in Buffalo this week checking out his new project. Later in the sports show, our Ryan Boland talks to Marcus Green on his meme shorts. Stay tuned. I don't remember how it started. Our back and forth. It always came back. You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Scored? Yeah, we scored. We're going to the playoffs. How you doing? Hey, Mason. Hey, Mason. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you. I think you got A place to make my home. A place that I call home. And this place that I call home. Being prepared is a part of who you are, but it's especially important in the case of a disaster. Be informed about possible emergencies in your area. Make a plan that covers where you'll go in an emergency. Build a kit with the things you need to survive. There's no one more capable of planning for your situation than you. Start your plan today. Go to ready.gov slash my plan. The U.S. says Russia would pay a high price for any further invasion of Ukraine, and the Pentagon has just announced it will deploy additional U.S. troops to Germany, Poland, and Romania. As Russia continues to amass troops near the border with Ukraine, the Harry Truman Carrier Strike Group is staying in the Mediterranean longer than planned to assure the U.S.'s NATO allies of its commitment in the face of Russian aggression. The Truman is also the first carrier to be placed under NATO command since the Cold War. And former Miami Dolphins head coach Brian Flores suing the NFL and three of its teams alleging, alleging racial discrimination. In a 58-page suit, Flores accuses the league of being racially segregated and, quote, like a plantation. Flores says he was discriminated by the league and some of its owners and managers while applying for the head coaching job of the New York Giants, claiming that the organization only interviewed him to satisfy the Rooney Rule, an order that requires teams to interview minority candidates for certain positions, including head coach. The NFL says Flores' claims are, quote, without merit. You may have seen a snow sculpture if you've been down West State Street in Olean this week. I bring you the story of the man behind the sculpture. A day for Eric Jones can sometimes begin at 6 a.m. and last all the way into the next day. Since there's snow on the ground, Jones is brightening up winter spirits through marvelous snow sculptures. It's amazing how Eric Jones can simply just turn an ordinary pile of snow like this one into something simply beautiful. The process is more like sand carving or stone carving more than building a snowman. It's, it's not, most people think when they think snow sculptures, they think they're made like you would make a, a, a snowman where you pile up the snow and pack it. You don't do that at all. Actually, you want the snow to be cold and sugary and soft not wet at all and then you pour it in and let it let it congeal and solidify and then, it, and then you can carve it like you would stone
from a young age, Eric knew he had a talent for art. I knew I had um, an obsession with drawing and creating and doing things artistic. I didn't realize I was, you know, exceptional at it until I got into school and started to compare myself to my peers. Eric's latest piece is of a Ford Bronco in honor of the 2022 Buffalo Auto Show. Eric began snow sculptures because of his love for carving pumpkins. His favorite is his 600-pound pumpkin that he did for the Heroes of Western New York. Eric was featured on Food Network's Halloween Wars for his pumpkin carvings. Incredible. It was an amazing experience. I'm looking forward to doing it again and competing again. You get to meet a lot of uh, celebrities and you're pushed with your creative uh, talents to the brink. Eric does most of his work for charity to give back to his community. Follow Eric on Facebook and Instagram at Eric Jones Studios. Reporting for SBU TV, I'm Johnny's Washington. Rich, I don't know about you, but my favorite was the Paw Patrol sculpture. Yeah, my favorite sculpture is that Bronco he did at the convention center. It's really impressive what he's able to do. And coming up in sports, the men's and women's basketball teams reach a pivotal point in their seasons with games this weekend. Ryan Bowen is in to break it down. And a new Bonnie's Hall of Fame class inducted last weekend. All that and more. Stick around. After you joined our family, it was like... I really do feel complete now. Put the keys down, Kevin. But I'm going to drive home. There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. My text to emoji ratio has gotten a little out of hand. A little? Yep, I'm definitely going to call a ride home. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie, the freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? 20 seconds. Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. That's Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. Not me. Thanks, Rich. Basketball season here on campus is picking up, and we have reached pivotal point in the schedule for both the men's and women's team. Tonight, for the 11th time this season, the Bonnie's men's basketball team will be in the national spotlight and will look to bounce back against an 8-10 foe in the Richmond Spiders. The Bonnies currently sit at 7th in the A-10 standings after being the A-10 preseason favorite following their loss to the A-10 leader, Davidson Wildcats. The Spiders are coming off a 74-57 road win against Duquesne, a team the Bonnies also defeated just a few games ago. You can watch this game tonight at 7 p.m. airing on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. And on the women's side, after a tight win against George Washington Wednesday, which saw senior guard Asian A. Johnson deliver two clutch free throws down one with four seconds remaining, the women's team will host the Richmond Spiders for their annual pink game on Saturday. All cancer survivors will receive free entry and all proceeds will benefit the Olean General Hospital Foundation, the Pink Pumpkin Project, and the Zonta Club of Olean. The game can be viewed at 1 p.m. on ESPN+. And this week we have a pre-game BBN to get you ready for the Bonnie's big matchup in the Rally Center against Fordham. Plus, the Olean Times Herald's J.P. Butler will have another story. Take a look at their upcoming schedule as well. Bonnie's basketball now at 5 p.m. Eastern at SBU TV Sports on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And last Saturday, the Bonnie's men's basketball team took on the St. Joseph's Hawks, and there were a few legendary Bonnie's in attendance for a very special occasion. 
I, that was. Ryan, right, right, right back on camera right now. Last Saturday, the Bonnie's men's. I'm not ready for this. So, as you see, we took a look at Marcus Green. We sat down with Marcus Green, a legendary St. Bonaventure basketball player here at St. Bonaventure from 04, 2000 to 2004. And I talked to him about his long shorts meme and his historic career here at St. Bonaventure. You're a thief, aren't you, Mark? Yeah. I like to steal the basketball. Bonnie's all-time leader. And so what made it so easy just to pick people's pockets? I'm already low to the ground. Clearly. That's very true. Ball. That's very true. <laughs> very true. Very low to the ground. So I want to play a game with you if that's okay. Yep. It's called Who Wore It Better? Okay. Okay. TJ Ford. He played for the Milwaukee Bucks. Yep, I remember him. Or Marcus Green. Mines. I'm going with Mines. You think because so? Because I played in the game with that. That was just a photo shoot. Who knows if he actually played in the game with it. I don't know where we're at. Following the reception and the ceremony, the Hall of Famers were honored. That's not it. Reporting for SB2. I don't even know, man. As you take a look, Josh Allen. I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Go to the When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Oh, we scored? Yeah, we scored. We're going to playoffs. How you doing? Hey, Mason. Hey, Mason. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Thank you. I think I finally found a place to make my own. A place that I call home. Being prepared is a part of who you are, but it's especially important in the case of a disaster. Be informed about possible emergencies in your area. Make a plan that covers where you'll go in an emergency. Build a kit with the things you need to survive. There's no one more capable of planning for your situation than you. Start your plan today. Go to ready.gov slash my plan. Welcome back. The Olympic torch has made its way to Beijing. Actually, it started and finishing there. The torch was lit in the Olympic Forest Park, which was built for the 2008 Summer Olympic Games, also held in Beijing. Former speed skater and China's first winter sports world champion, 80-year-old Luo Zhihuan, was the first to carry the new torch. 1,200 people who will carry it through the game's three competition zones and in around Beijing. The usual replay was scaled down due to COVID. The torch lighting the Olympic at the Olympic Cauldron at the opening ceremony marks the beginning of the 2022 Winter Olympic Games. And thanks for sticking with us this morning. For SVU TV, I'm Rich Williams. And I'm John East Washington. Have a safe weekend.